the myths that keep corporate leaders stuck and keep them from transitioning to entrepreneurship. I don't know, I hear all these myths and all these rumors about entrepreneurship. Maybe this isn't for me. This video is about to dispel all of that right now. Hey, hey, Courtney Sanders here. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new to me, I'm a full-time certified seven-figure life and business coach, as well as wife and mom and CEO. I wear all the hats and do all the things. Before I was even recording this, I was talking to my videographer about all that goes into running a business and managing a team. So your girl is doing it all, okay? In many respects, I feel like a corporation, like a little mini corporation, which kind of gets into what I'm gonna talk about today, which are the myths that keep corporate leaders stuck and keep them from transitioning to entrepreneurship. So you have the opportunity as well to launch your own business and become your own corporation. But I know that there are so many corporate leaders who are reluctant to make that leap. And so I know that there are those who are like, oh, you know, I hate my job, I'm ready to go. But I'm talking to you if you don't hate your job, right? I'm talking to you if you actually make great money in your job, maybe you have some level of autonomy because you're at the director level and above, you might even get to work from home a few days a week. Maybe you get to travel on your company's dime. However, you know that you are not fully maxing out your value. You know that what you are providing to the company, you'd make a lot more if you were out on your own. And maybe you're just tired of the office politics and you really just want to do something that is in your purpose and is in your passion. So if that's you and you're like, oh, I really want to make this leap, but I don't know. I hear all these myths and all these rumors about entrepreneurship. Maybe this isn't for me. This video is about to dispel all of that right now. All right, so the biggest myth that keeps corporate leaders stuck in their current position instead of transitioning to the business of their dreams is this myth around benefits, right? So I know the number one thing that people ask about is health insurance, benefits, how am I ever going to be able to cover that? And I find this really fascinating because when you think about it, the idea is for you to leave corporate America so that you can become your own business or you can start your own company or essentially create your own corporation, right? So if the company that you work for is currently paying for your health insurance, why don't you believe that the company that you want to create is able to pay for your health insurance? I think part of this myth comes down to people thinking that this is a lot bigger than it is. This video obviously is not gonna go into depth around um, the exchanges and you know Affordable Health Care Act and all these different things, but suffice it to say that it's not as hard as you think it is in order to go out there and buy your own health insurance. Yes, you as a company, even you as a small employer can buy health insurance for yourself or your employees if you so choose. So it's not a really big deal. I know that uh, for myself, looking for about a family of four, it could be anywhere from twenty dollars to $30,000 annually for the year for one employee. And I know that might seem like, oh, oh my goodness, that's so much. But remember, if you are starting your own business, the whole uh, goal is to replace your corporate salary. Your corporate salary also includes those benefits. So welcome to the CEO seat. Welcome to the CEO hat. Now you know how it feels, right? When HR managers are thinking about the people that they want to bring on or they're looking at their bottom line, it's not just the salary that they're paying that person, it's also the benefits and everything that goes into their package. So if you make $150,000 a year, when you include all of your benefits packages, your total value as an employee to that company might be actually 210,000, maybe that they're actually outlaying for you um, to, to do the work that you do. So there's your salary, but then there's all these other aspects that come into your benefits package. So you'll want to keep that in mind when you're thinking about transition into your own business. Don't just look at your current salary, but look at your total benefits package. And then you'll need to think about that as you consider what it is you actually want to sell, which leads me to the second myth that people often make when it comes to being a corporate leader, but thinking about transitioning into coaching is that they believe that they have to start small just because they're new. So again, if you're looking at your salary, hopefully you're taking your total salary, right? So what you're making, but also all of those maybe uh, invisible or even intangible things that go into your package, such as healthcare and all these other benefits, make sure you total all of that up because that is the real number that you need to be factoring in when you're thinking about pricing your services and pricing your packages. And so far too many corporate leaders, especially believe this myth that they have to jump out there and sell their sessions for $150 an hour because they're new. Oh, I'm new to this coaching game and so nobody's gonna pay for what I have to offer so I'm just gonna sell it for $150 an hour. No wonder you're worried about benefits. No wonder you're doing the math in your head, even back of the napkin math, and you're like, wait a minute, 
how many $150 an hour sessions am I gonna have to do in order to not only replace my salary, but replace my benefits? It would be a lot, which is why I don't recommend selling coaching sessions for $150 an hour. So the truth is because you are a corporate leader and you have lots of experience, whether you're choosing to coach in something that's related to your corporate job or something that is unrelated, you have experience either way. So you might be new to business, but you're not new to what you do. So there's no reason why you need to start small, start with what makes sense for the market, start at the true value of what it is that you offer, because that is going to be necessary for you to bust the first myth, which is how on earth am I going to pay for health insurance and all of these benefits? You need to make sure that your packages are priced appropriately. And you can do that even if you're new in business, because you're not new ultimately to the transformation that you provide and the coaching that you offer. All right, and so if you're wondering, well, how am I gonna come up with these coaching packages that are priced at a level that's gonna allow me to replace my total compensation package, not just my salary, that gets into the third myth that a lot of corporate leaders have, which is they believe that in order to transition into their own business, especially their own coaching business, that they need to trade dollars per hour. So here's the thing, you actually don't have to be the product in your business. Now, you do have to be the brand, right? I'm a big stickler for that. I'm not the product per se, I am the brand, right? So I have my own coaching certification program and coaching marketing program. We have several coaches that I hire that are on staff that help me facilitate that program. So when people work with me, they're actually not buying me per se, they're buying my methodology, they're buying my package, they're buying my outcome, and the certification and marketing program is ultimately what we offer. And so that's just an example of how you can take your own IP, you can take everything that you have developed up until this point, all of your experience, and you can package that into a product and essentially productize yourself so that you don't have to trade dollars per hour. And so that is going to allow you to ultimately charge more for whatever it is that you offer so that you can get to the place where you can replace your total compensation package. So don't get stuck in the rut of, oh, I'm trading you know, dollars per hour. Think more broadly about this. What is your knowledge that you can package into an actual product, whether that be some sort of coaching program, a course, a retreat even, again, think about about something that you can sell as a standalone that doesn't necessarily require you to show up and do you know an hour here for $150 or even an hour there for $500. We don't wanna sell our time for hours anymore. We want to sell our intellectual property in a package and sell it to a wide variety of people, right? Sell it in mass so that we can generate the revenue necessary in order to achieve our income goals. All right, I have more where that came from, but first I wanna hear from you. What's your biggest hangup that keeps you from taking the leap from corporate leader to lucrative coach. Go ahead, tell the truth, share in the comments below. All right, the next big myth, and I'm always amazed by this, that corporate leaders especially have is that they believe that they have to quit their job first before they can build a team in their business and nothing is further from the truth. In fact, if I could start over again, or if I had to start from scratch, this is something that I would have done more of. So I did this on a small level when I was just getting started in my business. I always talk about how I actually hired not one, but two virtual assistants to help me run and manage that business while I was still working my full-time corporate job. But if I had to do it over again, I would have doubled down harder on that and I would have built a bigger team before I. I myself even stepped out. So you'll see that a lot of this is really dependent on your ability to come up with a package that you can charge appropriate prices for, because that's how you're gonna get the revenue in order to pay this team. But there's no law per se that says that you can't be working in your current job and that you can't have a business that also is employing people or contractors to support you as you make that transition. So one of the benefits of what you have in your present position is that you are a corporate Leader. So that means you have two things. One, you have leadership experience. So you already know how to manage people. You probably already know how to build teams in your corporate job. You can go ahead and do that in your own business. I really love building teams with international contractors because they work at all hours of the day. So even while I'm sleeping or otherwise occupied, it might be their active hours that they're online and they're helping me really support my business. But in addition to having those leadership skills, if you are a corporate leader, chances are you have a pretty sizable salary. And so you need to think about your salary and your job is your first investor in your business. Start thinking about the money that you earn from your job. Think about your job really as your largest client and start delegating to offers and looking at your salary really as seed money. So start taking some of that seed money and saying, you know what, I know this is my salary and yes, I have bills to pay, but I have some left over and I'm going to dedicate that to the growth of my business 
as far as it means also supporting team, right? So paying for team, paying for tools, paying for tech, paying for all of these different things, I'm gonna do that with my salary because I can afford to do so and it's gonna help me grow my business that much faster. All right, another myth that so many corporate leaders make that really keeps them from making the leap is that they believe that starting a business ultimately means starting over. I get it, you have worked so hard in your career up until this point, maybe you've gotten even awards or accolades and you really know your stuff in the corporate arena and you're like, oh my goodness, if I start this coaching business, does that mean that I have to leave all of that behind? And the truth is no. Even if you are deciding to coach on something that is not directly related to your corporate experience or your corporate world, essentially, you can still leverage those contacts. So the beautiful thing about starting your own business is people know people, right? So even if you are running a coaching business or are looking to start a coaching business that is not directly related to whatever it is that you do at work, once you start to make that transition, you can tell trusted people in your network who can connect you with people in their network, and those people will connect them with people in their network, and the net just grows from there. And so you can still leverage your corporate experience, whether that is because you are doing something that's related to what it is that you do at work, or even if not, you can still leverage your corporate network in order to get this business started and to get it going so that when you do step out, you're stepping out into a business that is functional, that has products, that has services, that has clients, that even has a team, and yes, has a network of people supporting you. So you do not have to start over, you can just get started and then step into it once it's at the level that you need it to be in order to transition from your your corporate job. All right, I hope this video was helpful for you. If this has gotten your wheels turning and you're like, I'm a corporate leader, okay, Courtney, you've convinced me. I really wanna take this leap. I wanna invite you to this brand new free webinar that I have, it's actually called Corporate Leader to Lucrative Coach. You can click the link below in the description box to sign up, find a time that works for you, and you can watch it. It's 40 minutes, so make sure that you schedule about 40 minutes, but I go in depth about how to think about your packages and pricing, what you can actually come up with that you can offer as a coach, and then of course, how do you keep this on the hush hush? If this is something that you don't necessarily wanna advertise or you know tell the whole world about, and certainly you don't want all of your colleagues knowing, I share my iceberg method, which is a particular strategy that I recommend and that I've even used myself to help get your business going while you're still working your corporate job. So again, that masterclass is completely free. It's brand new. Go ahead and click the link below in order to register. All right, thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And if you love this, make sure that you are following me. I was gonna say following me on LinkedIn. I'm relatively new to LinkedIn. I'm starting to get into it, so I don't think it's following, but you can add me to your network. <laughs> Send me a request and a message. I love to connect with my subscribers who watch my videos. And of course, you know your girl is heavy on Instagram. So go ahead and follow me on Instagram. Feel free to send me a DM there. And if you can't wait for my next YouTube video, make sure you're also subscribed to my podcast. It's the Courtney Sanders show on both iTunes and Spotify. And I do those every single week in addition to my daily Instagram posts and LinkedIn posts and these YouTube videos. So find me wherever you desire. But until then, I will see you in the next video. Bye.